In part 8 of this series, we are going to start paying more attention to the look of the game by adding decorations to the environment and tweaking the lighting setup. First thing I wanted to change uh, is the background. We just got this default uh, skybox. So a quick way to just change that is uh, select the main camera and change that from skybox to solid color. And I'm just going to go with a whoops. I'm just going to go with a dark, got like a dark gray, sort of like this. And what we can also do is actually play with the lighting as well. Um, if you change the uh, rotation here, we can uh, get some. Can actually get some different. And you can just keep on playing uh, with this lighting uh, however you like. Something like this I think is nice. But uh, you can actually you can actually do a lot uh, with it. Might make it a little bit brighter. You can also play with the colors as well. Make it a bit more, slightly more yellow. Um, so if you just set everything to the minimum uh, and then just increase the bias slightly, we can get rid of some of those little artifacts there. Just clean that up. Um, maybe even, even decrease the the strength of the shadows slightly. By having a, if you, yeah, if the shadows are too harsh, they end up really looking very blocky. Um, but if we just make the shadows just a little bit more faint, it ends up not looking as, as harsh. Um, of course, I did this in play mode because <laughs> I just wanted to see how these coins were spinning. So when I come out of play mode, everything's going to be reset, but I know what to do. So the bias, just barely see all those little artifacts on the corners. We can just get rid of those just by bringing that up a touch. And then bringing this to about here. I like the look of that. Uh, another thing you can do in the project settings, in the quality settings, uh, you can turn up the uh, anti-aliasing, which just makes all the edges smoother. Um, that's another way to kind of improve the look of it. Uh, you can change the color. You know, if it's a, if you're just using white light, it ends up looking a little bit, you know, not very. Not very warm. You can go for like a like that. That looks pretty good. Could even bring the light over to the the green side a little bit, just a touch. Or you can bring it over to the over to the red side. I think somewhere in the yellow, in like the yellowy, yellowy with like a hint of green. Yeah, quite quite happy with that in terms of lighting. Um, 
can see I've set my lighting to 60 and then what you can do minus minus 190 something like that I'm uh, quite happy with that um, another thing I actually wanted to do just to kind of make the scene uh, look a little more interesting um, I can just select on my blocks Oop, down here let's get out of that isometric uh, we do have some additional blocks um, that don't necessarily provide any uh, anything in terms of gameplay, but it can just help kind of make the level just look a little bit more interesting. So uh, something I just wanted to add first was this little uh, cliff block here. Uh, and we'll just add a mesh collider for this one, ticked convex, uh, bring that into our prefabs. And uh, I just wanted to put this here um, just because it looks a bit more interesting uh, than these two blocks. So I can just get rid of these and uh, snap it in here. Whoops. Oh geez. Okay. Yeah. So snap that in. Duplicate that. Snap that in there. There we go. You can already see. Looks a little bit more different. Kind of breaks it up. I mean, you could even do that, you know, in a variety of places. Uh, and something I wanted to do as well is actually uh, add a bridge, uh, bridge here. Uh, so we do have a bridge uh, object here. Of course, uh, since our plane is disabled, it's popping them all the way down there. But uh, for this one, um, we're just going to add a box collider. Uh, I don't need it to be that big. We can make the size 0.1 and then uh, about there, 0 0.88, that looks good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, and let's get that into our prefabs. A little bridge and then just snap it like well actually I want to snap it like there um, but then just move it out about there there we go got a little uh, little bridge there it's starting to look a bit more interesting um, we can bring this cube out and I might snap that about there. Uh, let's see. We can also see how it's looking. If you wanted to, you could also. Uh, add another little piece here, little half bridge, and do the same kind of thing here. Add a box collider, uh, size 0 0.1, 0 point, I think it's 88. Yeah, that's fine. Add that to our prefabs. and just pop it up there because I would hate for the player to miss the flag and, <laughs> and roll off the edge. I think that kind of looks uh, kind of looks cool. Just having that off the edge there. Um, I think that's about about it in terms of of uh, actual 
level, like actual uh, block based um, stuff that makes it look a little bit nicer. Let's bring all these uh, into the blocks parent. Another little cool thing you can do is you can actually, um, if you click on this little no touching thing, if you click on it, it doesn't actually select in the scene. So if I go and select everything, it selects everything but the blocks. Uh, and then you just click that again to turn that off. So let's disable that because I think we're done uh, playing with box boxes. And then uh, I'm just going to just start uh, throwing in um, some kind of uh, little decorations. Uh, so for this, we don't need to, I mean, it's up to you if you want to add colliders to them or not. Um, since they are just decoration, uh, I'm not going to add any colliders to them. Um, so I think, you know, I might put a, a tree, I don't know, about here. See how that looks in the game. Yeah, I like that. Something like that. So already it's looking, uh, it's already looking quite nice, I think, uh, in terms of decorations. One last thing we could do, uh, I think, uh, as an improvement. Actually, I might take that camera and just center the whole level a bit. I'm just looking down in that preview there. Hmm. About here looks good, or maybe maybe a bit more to the to the left. Yeah, that looks about right. The final touch that we can make for our game is to change the font for our time, score, and next level button. So the way we can change our font is just by going into Google and just typing in. Defont. This is a website where you can source free fonts. I personally wanted to use a font called Pinecone. This is a public domain font. There are no restrictions on the use. There are plenty of other fonts that are available for personal use as well. So just click on this download button here. And we'll just hit save. When that's finished downloading, we can go into our downloads folder and right click and extract here. And from that, you'll get this TTF file. So go back into your project, open up the folder and drag your TTF file into the assets folder, just like that. Now, before we can actually use this font asset, we need to convert it to a font asset that Text Mesh Pro can use. Click Window up here on the top left, and from the Text Mesh Pro menu, click on Font Asset Creator. And then you can drag your Pinecone app font or whatever font you want to use into here and click generate font atlas then click save and then just save again close this so now we have our font our text mesh pro font asset we can delete the old one we don't need that anymore and then it's as simple as just going to our canvas and selecting our two text mesh objects and then dragging the font asset into here. And you can see it's changed up here. And we can also do that for our next level button. So let's enable this. 
and then expand it to select the text component and then drag our pinecone font asset into here. And then now that that is done, let it, let's disable the next level button and then hit play. And this concludes the Unity game development tutorial. I really encourage you all to continue to experiment with this project. Um, try creating different levels, uh, new prefabs, um, even try implementing your own code. Something that I recommend trying to do on your own is implementing sounds. So just as a, a hint, on the main camera object here, we have a audio listener and you can add a component if you just type in audio and audio source. An audio source takes a clip, an audio clip, and then it has a bunch of settings here. And say, for instance, you wanted to make a sound each time you hit a coin, you can go to your player controller script. And in here, in this if statement, if other.tag equals coin, you can write play coin sound here. So here is where you would write the code that would play the coin sound. And online, on Google, you can actually uh, find any information about anything in Unity. You just type in Unity and then whatever it is you want to know. So in this instant, you might search Unity audio source. And here you can see it'll come up with a scripting API and the manual. So the manual just explains how the component works and you know it can be quite complicated some of it but there's a lot that you don't really need to be too concerned about. Um, and then here the API which it gives an example of how to use it with code with C Sharp and it lists all of the properties and methods. And as another hint, I recommend using the play one shot method. And if you click on that, it gives a example of how that method is used and what it does and all the parameters and all of that. So, so that's a good first step in the direction of doing things yourself.